Good evening, this is Nick Inman from VolumeProfileTrader.com on Tuesday, December 13th. And look, the market, it, it gapped open this morning and if you're in the trading room, we talked about 1242 being the top of the range and 1230 being the bottom of the range. Well, today, in fact, we basically got those exact levels and we traded up, we gapped open higher and we trade up to 1242 1244 and you can see that's the value area low for last week and we reversed off those levels we traded down to 1230 held it and balanced above that and then the fed came saying you know easing fed, or quantitative easing could be on the horizon but um you know the the market turmoil you know europe etc that would be their their cause for you know for the policy of of easing, but you know for now they're just kind of sitting on their hands and waiting, trying to buy as much time as possible. So you know as of right now we're in a, we're in a downtrend, and if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that you know really we should be going down to twelve hundred. We got as low as. 12, 12 or so today on the S&P futures contract, and uh, you know, generally speaking, even if this this overlaps a little, you know, we're we're having a, a downtrending channel, and you know, the market's weak in the trade right now is to sell into strength. Could that change? Yes, of course it can change. It can change by tomorrow, but for now, we're getting lower lows and lower highs off of last week's point of control, and also. It is, I'm going to bring it up really quick. Let me change, we don't need to be looking at gold, rather the S&P. And I'm going to say now, you know, on Friday, that was really, you know, tra selling into stre strength. And that was the real trade. Unfortunately, Monday gapped lower and traded lower. We didn't get an opportunity to sell into that point of control for December. We got that opportunity as close as an opportunity as we got today. And I know me, a few other people in the trading room took advantage of it. We bought some TZA, rode this down, and I personally took profits close to the bottom today. And my reasoning for taking profits was this general level is 1210 level you can see back in November or October it looks like October uh, we have our point of control from October at those levels and I thought it was enough for basically a short-term bounce and we got that and so right now you know the market we're getting these lower lows lower highs and, you know, it's kind of forming a, a bullish wedge pattern, though not really. Give it a little more time to develop. And what we're looking for here is to see if the market's going to come down and test this, this important 1200, 1190 level. You can see the significant volume in that range. And if it does, you know, obviously the next, the next step is to see if that level holds. Also... It's it's not going to surprise me if these current levels hold, but give this some time to basically consolidate. Or, you know, I, I guess you could say we have gap, you know, the gap down here from 1190, and then you have you know the gap from that one Friday gapping up on Monday around 1153 or so. So there's there's definitely some some I guess you could call them air pockets, you know, potential you know just straight down to where buyers are going to be interested in buying but at the same time you know the there's going to be in my opinion an underlying bid to the market just because you know people think that there's going to be quantitative easing people think there's going to be you know Santa Claus rally or whatever you want to call it and also this is season seasonality it's it's a great time to be owning stocks now 
that doesn't mean that you should be owning stocks. And the price action for right now, you know, we're selling off of December's point of control. I wish we got a better uh, opportunity rather than today in the morning when we traded up to 12.42, but we didn't, and that's unfortunately that's part of trading. So, you know, right now we're at a potential low for the market, but you know, let's not you know take this for granted. We are in a downtrend, so downtrend, but at a potential support level. Pulling up the gold futures contract uh, just to get an idea of where we where we are at, and the last couple of days we've gapped lower from this December point of control. You know this November value area low, looking for that level to hold. It didn't, and so simply we look at lower levels. And I, I guess you could say we have a potential trend line support here. But what I find a little more interesting is this composite on the right hand side for the last three or four months we have value area support we also have October's point of control that we're you know sitting on so we want to see gold start to stabilize and you know really any decoupling in the market should help gold you know retain some type of value and you know wait for this trade we're at good levels but you know we're we're also breaking down and we're making lower lows so I'm sorry I yeah lower lows lower highs and you know so it's not it's not a fantastic you know wow go buy gold tomorrow but at the same time you know you you have some levels to trade off of and you know remember this was the same levels we're we're trading at now was the same breakout level that we saw at the end of October so you know, we, we've basically retraced that entire move in a slow grind down, and I think it makes sense to keep gold on your radar and, you know, look out for a trading opportunity. Now, gold's, you know, partner in crime, Silver, this has been a trade that we've been looking at, and it's broken down to the downside, and we had a test of that breakout level, yes, today, and we failed against it, but silver, I mean, down a percent and a half, but not really going down. What I could really do is just draw a box. Actually, I'm just going to draw two lines. And, you know, this is our trading range. We have, I mean, the whole moving averages are all pointing down. So the trend, you know, we short term, yes, it's a downtrend. We're looking at that. You want me to zoom in more? Lower lows, lower highs. We see that. But, you know, we're, we're at, we're at potential, you know, it was support here, and, you know, it can be support again, this $31 level, watch for this December point of control to shift, oh, I, I had the silver futures up if you want to look at SLV, it's going to look a little bit different, but, I mean, generally speaking, you can even say that, you know, September's point of control bouncing off of that, I wouldn't put too much credence into that, only because, you know, SLV, it, it more, you know, I, I would be looking at the Silver's future contract more uh, for, you know, specific levels. And we're looking at, well, it looks like this is a little off balance, to be honest. But, uh, it, you know, whatever. It's, uh, you know, the fact is we have a downtrend looking for a similar point of control shift shift in December. So let's look at another name, Celgene. This name is one of the few that few that continue to work, and which is nice. It's provided us a trading opportunity off of the sixty-one dollar level. It's uh, long-term support, and you can see it's also you know September's point of control. And you know we have these lower lows. I'm sorry, lower highs. We broke out of that today, which was positive. And you can see if I zoom in, whole moving average is all starting to point up. We are against November's point of control. We are against the composite point of control. So keep an eye on that. It's you know potential top to the market, especially how the market's trading right now. However, you also want to be opportunistic and look to buy this thing on any weakness. Because if I zoom out one, and hopefully... Okay, I zoomed out and zoom in and you can see this huge volume bouncing off of that 
and you know our, our lower highs break out that today if I really zoom in today you know we, we gapped higher we traded up we made a new intraday high and then we closed basically where we open which isn't too positive but you know it's it's not it's just one day and one day doesn't you know sometimes it does change trends but normally speaking it's not the end of the trend it's not the start of a trend so keep this on your radar if you're long great you're you're in a winning stock and that's what it's about especially at times like these where not much is working so Celgene still looks good let's cover crude crudes up two percent today you can see it continues to balance within this range we still have a higher low forming and a break one way or the or the other should provide a trading opportunity however I would stay basically biased to the long side 50 day moving average still pointing straight up and the 200 day moving average is under price right now if I minimize this and go to oil on an hourly chart okay you can see you know this looks a little bit different trading off of December's point of control I would consider this you know actually a sell right now and you can see we're holding November's failing against December's whole moving averages especially this longer one starting to roll over uh, definitely above price so I mean to be honest you can see in, in the daily chart the trend is definitely higher but right here right now you know this thing looks like it's going back to the lows that back to this ninety eight dollar level which you know it's only two dollars from here but that's where it looks like it was going it, you know it looks like this was a great opportunity to sell into this today however you know you look at where it's you know it's came from ninety five or seventy five dollars and you know we're up at one oh three so just we're actually up at a hundred but just keep this on your radar. Keep the you know keep an eye on this triangle pattern. From right here, right now, you sell it with a profit target of ninety eight dollars, and you look to see where the buyers are then. So you know it's going to be interesting for how oil plays out. But if it's anything like the rest of the commodities, you know, well, I should say this: the rest of the commodities have definitely been weaker relative to oil. So it will be interesting to see which way it plays out. So TLT up a percent today, which is obviously the bond ETF, and we're bouncing off of December's point of control. We had a, you know we had a nice move higher today, though I wouldn't be I wouldn't be jumping into this just because you really never know what may happen. And this you know the bond story, especially going long bonds, that's just not my trade. You know after we where we've seen it you know it's from much lower levels as far as the bond uh, the bond price and you know now we're at higher levels so I would keep an eye if anything on TBT I wouldn't be jumping in this now that's you know definitely if you had to look at TBT or TLT which are just the exact opposites you know TLT looks like it has more potential though similar you know it's funny the the market it's it's finding itself in a in a pretty tight range looking for some type of catalyst to move one way or the other and you know this goes for the bond market commodities and equities and until we get you know a real move it we play the ranges and it's it's we're still expecting a move higher though we can't take anything for granted and the way you know market action right now we're you know back to the ES we're looking at lower prices potential bullish wedge we see that we get it but until until we actually get a move off of there it's best to sit tight okay Apple Apple sold off pretty aggressively with the rest of the market at the end of the day we had our highs you know it looked like this thing was gonna break out to the upside this morning and then that was clearly a failure and this 395 level continues to hold any upside and but I, I still think Apple on this weakness is interesting we're just at the bottom of this range you see the significant volume not much lower you see the longer dated whole moving average is still pointing up shorter dated overpriced signal you know signaling 
that were in a balance range. So keep this on your radar and it should do well with the rest of the market if the rest of the market catches a bid. Okay, another name that I want to cover that I was this was a good trade for me back in oh, May or June and had a nice ride up. You know, it was volatile along the way, so you, you know, you get kicked out. But uh Terra Nitrogen, this is a spin-off of I believe uh, uh, CF Industries and this this name now this is this is important this thing yields Terra Nit or uh, CF Indig Industries Terra Nitrogen this thing yields 10 percent a year and not only that it's it's a pretty volatile issue and I'm not saying that this thing can keep its dividend I don't know much about its fundamentals but I can see its its price action and I can see that it's performing well you know relative to the rest of the market and up two percent today it definitely stuck out so if I look at it on a intraday chart you can see what's going on here we are you know we've been coiling for the last you know a couple of weeks call it a month call it whatever you want and now we're starting to catch a bit on this name. I think this is a name that can push towards 175 back towards November's point of control and I think you can be involved at these levels even up you know even since the run from 151 to 161 any weakness towards 158 would be you know a great buying opportunity because you could put your stop a couple dollars lower and see if this thing can really push towards 175 remember it has a 10 percent dividend and people are going to be interested in buying that weakness. The only thing I would say about Terra Nitrogen is watch out for this 164, 165 level. You know, it's it has capped the rallies recently, and you know it could cap it again. Okay, now the last two names I'm going to cover the euro and the dollar, and the reason why is because these these names have had an impact on the market especially the euro and it's going to be worth watching and because basically wherever the euro goes goes the S&P so if we cover the dollar right here we've had this this basically you know well higher higher lows off November's point of control and December's point of control forming at the bottom of the range and we're really getting a breakout to the upside here on the dollar which is you know it's it's positive if you're holding a lot of dollars in your account which you should be because you know we're not in market conditions that you should be piling in and you know being overexposed to anything really other than US dollars and if we look at the euro and I, you can see I have a lot of lines drawn but I'm going to get rid of them really quick so you don't have to look at them. And one thing to notice about the euro, other than it looks the exact opposite of the dollar, is, you know, we continue, for example, failed against November's point of control. Now we, you know, we had December's point of control form in the middle. Maybe we're forming a bottoming pattern. Maybe, you know, we have this downtrending channel. Maybe we're going to break out. I, I remember talking about, now that I look at this, you know, if we break above this level, we should catch a bid in the euro and test November's point of control. Well, we definitely got a move in the euro, but it was it was to the downside, and you can see it's it's been accelerating, and it's gotten ugly for the euro. So, as far as targets for the euro, yeah, I can zoom out and look at levels, but you can see, I mean, you really have to, to have to start zooming out to get potential levels to the downside and you know really you have to look at current levels that we're trading at and you know the recent swing lows back in December and looks like the beginning of January so December 2009 January 2010 that was the last time we were at these levels and you know sure there's we're probably going to get a bounce in the euro but is this something you know if you're a currency guy or you know whatever or gal is this something you really want to be buying and for me you know once we broke down 
you know, out of that 135 level, it's really turned my bias to the euro to the downside. And if we remember, you know, we see, let me get the UUP. Uh, you can see that we've, you know, our bottoming pattern that we've talked about in the past, and basically this, you know, these this turnaround story in the dollar, we, we got a breakout, we tested the breakout, and now we're moving higher, and, you know, now we're, we are at, well, we're literally at the same prices back in uh, the bottoming from October 4th, so the dollar is at the same levels that the, the UUP, that is, that the market bottomed at, so you know, you can see the market, the actual S&P, you know, here's where the dollar, I should say, topped out at last. And here's, you know, here's it now. So the market is performing relatively well compared to the the dollar and definitely the euro. It's outperforming the euro. But, you know, if the euro goes to, let's say an extreme, let's say euro goes to parity with the dollar, it's going to drive the market down with it naturally and it's going to force you know people need liquidity as far as you know actual dollars you know banks and it's going to spur some type of easing around the world because banks are going to be need dollars or it's going to be ugly so you know there's some there are some serious problems out there and the federal reserve you know QE3 it may not you know solve it but as long as we stay above this point of control level and hold this, the, basically, we'd love to see this 1205, 1207 level hold. And uh, if we go lower than that, that's fine. But, you know, it, really 11, 1180, that's our, that's our cutoff. And below that, you know, it could start getting ugly for the market. So there's not, there's not a lot to do right now. But on a bounce, you know, stick with what's working and stick what stick with what continues to, you know, on weakness make sense. And if you can't find those opportunities and these and these opportunities right now that we're looking at aren't sufficient, then cash is fine and you know, cash is king. But take for example not inter voice. Take Intel. You know, this is a name that because Warren Buffett bought it, people have, you know, have been wanting to be a part of it. Well, this thing comes back another, another dollar or so, and you're sitting at the value area high for the last two years. Not about an opportunity to start scaling into, you know. So I don't think the market's at bad levels, but if we start to see an acceleration in selling, then we have to go with the sellers and respect the fact that the market's getting beaten the you know our December point of control for the S&P it's at the top of the range and I wish we got an opportunity to sell up there but today at 11 4 or 1240 1245 that was really our only opportunity and if you didn't catch it you know it was a great trade to the downside but you can't sweat it if you didn't catch it and you know just just stay patient sit on your hands it's you know this is a volatile market you'll get your opportunity I promise you so uh, I guess I'll see everyone tomorrow in the trading room